Can I play? All right. You and Kelvin gets me and Jamal. Oh man, he's a girl. Girls can't play no ball. Ball better than you. I'm gonna be the first girl in the NBA. No, I'm gonna be in the NBA. You gonna be my chili. They play the same game. If you don't start a bad attitude, critical foul. No one's gonna recruit you. I'm a ball player with a jacked up attitude. They share the same dream. You'd love for him to play USC like you did, right? No, I'd love for him to get a good education. I don't know why I keep hoping you'll grow out of this tomboy thing. I won't. I'm a lesbian. <laughs> That's not funny. Damn, you don't look half bad. You either. How about a little one-on-one? -on -one? And what we playing for? I score, you strip. Take it off. Take it off. Oh, strip. All fair in loving basketball, baby. There's only one way to be successful at anything, and that is to give everything. Coach has us on 11 o'clock curfew. I can stay a few more minutes. I'm sweating. I'm sorry. I don't have it easy like you are, right? There's no red carpet laid out for me. And ain't no way some soft freshman is taking my spot. Uh, Monica, hustle up, move it! Hey, Monica, hey, you forgot to be there. If I stayed, I wouldn't be starting. Well, at least you got your priorities straight. Look, I'm entering a draft. I'm going pro. Ooh. So that's it. Just forget about you and me. New Line Cinema presents a story about the passion it takes. I never knew anyone loved ball as much as you. To keep your dreams alive. I've loved you since I was 11, and it just won't go away. This spring. I'll play you one game, one on one. For what? Your heart. All's fair in love and basketball. Please welcome our host for today's program, director, producer, writer, Patty Jenkins. Hello, I'm so happy to be here. Um, wow, I cannot believe it's been 20 years since Love and Basketball came out. Um, it was such a great time getting to rewatch it again recently. Uh, I'm super grateful to get to be the one hosting this panel of an iconographic film. Um, I think one of my favorite things about the film is uh, is something that has been noted for many, many times, uh, which is that it really, it was a game changer in, in the way that it showed people in a different way than anyone had ever seen them before. For me, it was one of the first times I saw something that spoke to me about myself as a woman and our generation. And it introduced me to a world that I didn't know with such authenticity that it was actually startling, which is such an interesting experience because, um, you know, there's so many cliches in films that one gets used to, um, that when you suddenly don't see those cliches and you see a story being told in a way that's actually very truthful to you and your, and, and the way you've experienced life, it actually is surprising because it's just as successful of a story, uh, but yet it's not one you've ever experienced before as familiar as it is. And I found myself thinking, my God, that's how women actually feel, or that's how things actually happen, or that's how, that's why, that's how men actually behave, or that's how these different things. So I love the movie for that reason. But what I really love about the movie is that it can be remembered for those reasons, but the truth is it's a great film. That's the reason that we remember it. That's the reason we talk about it. Um, it's an incredibly confident film. It's a beautifully told story with a very avant-garde structure. Um, and it's, it's an unusually striking visual style that was also something I'd never seen before. The way the sports were played and the way that so many of the experiences from the love scene to the, um, you know, just, just to the experience of, of the whole thing. I'd never seen anything quite like it, um, but it was effortlessly done and it makes it a memorable and now modern classic. So let's bring some of the filmmakers responsible for this piece of filmmaking. First up, I'd love to welcome uh, a friend, a peer and a critically acclaimed director and someone that I admire and love. Um, she exploded onto the scene as an auteur filmmaker behind this film, but's followed it up with Fantastic Secret Life of Bees and Beyond the Lights. And I'm really looking forward to the upcoming Old Guard with my dear friend Charlize Theron. 
um, off for Netflix. So let's welcome the one and only Gina Prince Blythewood. Hey. Hi, Gina. Hi, Patty. Thanks for being here. No doubt. Thank you so much. And uh, next up, let's bring on Love and Basketball's very own Monica. In addition to her incredibly powerful and memorable performance on this film, she's been in Blade and The Wood and Something New and Contagion and great work on television and The Affair and Family Guy and Nip Tuck and so many other things. Mm -hmm. She also went on to executive produce and star in The Perfect Guy and Napoli Ever After and start creating her much of her own work. So um, her leading performance in this film was an incredible feat of acting as she so beautifully rose to the challenge of giving an amazing performance, but all the while acting this incredibly sophisticated basketball playing, which she took on completely for this film, which I can't imagine doing both of those things at once. So welcome the stunningly impressive Sina Lathan. <laughs> Hi, Sina. <laughs> How are you, Patty? Thank you so much for doing this. I'm such a huge fan. So nice to meet you. I'm such a huge fan too. So, so great to have you here. Welcome. Hey, Gina, what up? What up, Gina? What up, yo? <laughs> <laughs> um, next, let's bring on someone I'm going to introduce because I should, and that's what I'm here to do. But the truth is I really don't have to because she's a legend and we all know who she is from her fantastic work in everything from Oscar nominated cross, uh, performance in Cross Creek to Grand Canyon to Passion Fish, 12 Years of Slave, Crooklyn. And I'm only naming some of my favorites, so there's a huge body of work. Um, in this film, she gives an incredibly honest performance as Camille Wright, Monica's mother. And she has, uh, she's a, also a passionate activist with great achievements, including her work for South Africa and AIDS and serving on President Obama's Committee for the Arts. Um, I'd love to introduce or, or bring on the exceptional talent we all know and love, Alfre Woodard. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> so nice to, to so nice for me to meet you. I've never met you before, even though I've always wanted to. So thanks, thanks, thanks for being here. And so nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Patty. And next, um, the the young actress who played young Monica. Oh my God, uh, what an amazing performance! She started acting as a young child and has an impressive body of work for someone still so very young. Her performance in this film was startlingly present and skilled for someone with such a difficult task of living up to a character being established by another great actor, and and playing basketball and juggling so many things. She did a beautiful job at it. Let's welcome Kyla Pratt. I love that. <laughs> hey, how are you guys? Good. Hey, Kyla. Hey. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm so happy to even just be a part of this. So thank you for including me. That's awesome to have you. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, let's welcome a longtime co collaborator of Gina's, a gifted editor with such wonderful films as Eve's Bayou, Biker Boys, Diary of a Mad Black Woman, Talk to Me, Secret Life of Bees, Black Nat Nativity, and most recently, wonderful work on When They See Us, Tara Lynn Shropshire. Here we go. Hi, everybody. Hi. So I'm Hi. so glad to be here with you. No doubt. Oh, nice to have you all. So um, as I mentioned, I'll kick it off with starting the, a conversation, even though I know there's so much to say, probably amongst you guys who some of you see each other all the time, but some of you may not have seen each other. Um, hopefully we'll get to catch up a little bit here. Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, one of my favorite things about the filmmaking here was the, may, the way it made me see the world in a way that I'd never seen myself and, and seen you know, a familiar thing. Um, but I also, I really love how you did a, things like shot the basketball, Gina. Like, I, it, that was so beautifully done. I've never seen it that way again. And it really gave me the experience as someone who doesn't play basketball mm -hmm. of what it feels like to be in the game. And it made it a very followable story, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I think that the work that, that you and Tara Lynn did together to make that a story that I, I as a non-basketball player, was completely following, but felt all of the emotion behind too. Like, where are you at in it? And then in addition, the way you shot even the, the, the intimacy scene, I'd never seen that before. And that actually got to me and spoke to me in a way. And, and the, you know, the mother daughter relationship was something. How did you go about approaching the filmmaking uh, aspect of this film? Mm -hmm. 
Wow. Well, um, you know, your first film is, it was a lot of uh, just preparation in terms of, I, I think I watched every single basketball film that was out at the time. And, you know, you see the way that things are shot and, and I think it's just natural as a filmmaker. How can you tell it differently? And even more so for that, I'm a ball player. I sound like Monica, but I mean, <laughs> since I was four years old, I had a ball in my hand and um, wanted to try and capture that and, and let an audience feel what I feel, the joy that I have on court and the pain and the emotion and um, and what it feels like to be in a game and uh, really, really tried to figure out how we could do that. And this was before the time of GoPros and, and much smaller cameras where, you know, it would be easier to do that. Um, so it was a lot of trial and error of, of how we could do that. And it finally um, came to let, let's do handheld and, and be, be Monica, let the camera be Monica and um, props to our, uh, um, our basketball choreographers, because it took such incredible work to to make it work. But in addition to that, all the ball players on the floor were girls on the Crenshaw basketball team. So, you know, these aren't stunt people; they are they are real ball players. But I think, in essence, that that kind of helped with the authenticity as well. Um, but so much of it was making the camera be Monica. But then also, what was important was um, Sanaa's voiceover in that. And again just putting us in the head of a ball player and what you feel in the moment and what you're seeing. And um, I think with the, you know, love scene, it was, it was kind of that same thing. I, I wanted to put an audience in the head of what it is to your first time. Um, and I, I set the camera, but I, I really have to give all props to Sanan Omar because so much, it just, it's funny that scene got in our, got us in our rating from the MPAA. Um, and they said, because it, it felt too real, <laughs> um, which is an amazing compliment, but it also pissed me off because there's no nudity. There's, it was just focused yeah. on their faces, but that's what I wanted to do is, is put an audience in the head of both the girl and, and the guy and um, just the way that they were looking at each other and the moments that they played that just felt real of, you know, a girl taking her dress off for the first time in front of this boy that she loves and the nervousness of that and, you know, just, just playing all that. And again, that was Sanan Omar bringing so much just dopeness to, to that scene. And, and then I'll give a little prop to Maxwell, who just sang the hell out of that Kate Bush song, uh, Woman's Work. And, and uh, it's so tied to that scene now because it, it's such an amazing song and it just felt like just such a great marriage of image and emotion and music. So how does it feel, Gina, to look back after all of these years of what the film has become and how it's been received? There's obviously the experience of making it and like you're hoping, fingers crossed, that it succeeds and whatever, but then it turns into something else over the 20 years. How does that feel looking back? Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, the crazy thing, I mean, uh, if, if I allowed myself, I would cry right now because like seeing this group is it's so beautiful and uh, I miss all of us and I miss what we had on that set and I just wanted like bottle it and, and just do it over and over it was just such you know it was such a special time and um, you know I, to, to think that this we're talking about this movie 20 years later is it is truly surreal because it was so hard to get it made. It was so hard to write. It was so hard to get anyone to believe in it, except for my husband, Reggie Rock, all props uh, to him. Um, it, you know, as I've said, every studio turned it down. And uh, that is such a devastating thing to write something so personal um, and to take the leap of faith of, of writing a spec uh, about a subject, uh, you know, a black girl and, uh, and a love story with, with black characters. It, they weren't being made, but I had to tell the story. And um, so to put so much of myself in there and put it out to the world and get crickets, uh, you know, that hurt. Um, but just things, it's so interesting that things just seem to fall into place for this film. And I truly believe everything happens for a reason and, and how Sanaa came to be. There were so many times if something had happened differently, she would not be in this movie. Mm -hmm. and. I can't fathom this film without Sanaa. 
um, to to know I, I had to get Alfred for this film, but like I'm, you know, this young woman and like, why would Alfred want to be in something that I wrote? But being able to sit across from her and that first lunch and so scared to even open my mouth. <laughs> Like, am I going to say something stupid and she's going to know I'm a fraud and I don't know what I'm doing? And, you know, and Alfred was so great and gracious and, and wanted to be in it. Like, oh, my God. And seeing Kyla in these commercials, these Nike commercials, and seeing myself as a little girl and knowing that that was young Monica. And now how do I get her in the movie and, and begging an 11-year-old, please, please be a part of this Um like to see all these stages uh, and how much fight it took to get to get this made to be in this place now. I, I honestly, I wish I could figure it out why and bottle it and put it into every film. But you know, maybe that that's a thing. Every film doesn't get to do that. But I think I think just the experience and the people involved are what made it so special. So yeah. how how do you think this experience influenced? the films that you went on to want to make and the films that you are, have made and are making? Mm -hmm. Well, I will say the honestly, the most important thing that uh, it has done for me is the knowledge that I just need one yes. Um, because every movie except for Secret Life of Bees has been a fight to get made. But knowing how hard this one was, how many no's, how I had to overcome no to get it made um, gives me the courage to, to um, you know, write things that, that may not be initially um, thought to be commercial, but it's something that I believe in. So I think that honestly is the most important thing. And then I think just growing as a filmmaker, my experience with, with these actors and, and things that Alfred taught me, uh, I've taken on every set and um, in Sana and I's relationship and in coming to become friends and, and being able to talk to her as a director actor um, when I'm going to go do another film um, and just my relationship with actors, which is just the most important thing to me um, and building that trust. <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, certainly have taken those things. That's cool. Yeah. Th th and then it's funny, you're talking about Sana and your relationship. Here's what's funny. I never knew about the casting process or anything. And so it was funny when I started getting ready for this panel because I was like, God, this is like the match made in heaven. This is like the, like, it's such a great performance. I, it, it reminds me of you. And it's a kind of woman that I have never seen before. It holds, it, it, what's amazing about it is the, the Sinai, you hold the cards very close to your vest, but yet you're so emotive at the same time and giving such a great performance. And there's such a subtlety to that. Um, so I was shocked when I ended up hearing that it was this long road. I actually totally understand it. I can't imagine if you're trying to cast someone to play basketball, the circles that you would go in, it actually made perfect sense to me. But um, we actually have a clip to show from a 2001 panel that uh, you, Gina, did at the, at the Academy's uh, Samuel Goldman Theater of a, to a group of high school students. And in it, you talk about casting. And I'd love to know if this is still the way you remember it now. The hardest thing for me, and I've talked to Sanaa about this, so it's not like I'm blowing her up here. The The hardest thing was casting Monica. Um, it's like I knew the script worked. I got the whole cast together. Couldn't find a, a, someone to play Monica. I looked for actors. I looked for athletes. You know, actors would come in and lie and say they could play ball, so I'd put them on the court, and it was just embarrassing. So... Finally, um, I just said, I'm going to go with an athlete and teach him how to act. But, you know, there were so many things that the character Monica had to be. And she and going up against people like Omar and Alfred Woodard, just in auditions, again, uh, the people that I that I looked at just were not strong enough. So, you know, I knew Sana because she had done the reading for me and helped me actually get the movie made. Um, and if I had never seen her do that, she probably never would have had a shot because she'd never played basketball in her life uh, before this movie. So, um, you know, she worked out for four months and, uh, you know, I'd go watch her practices and I was just scared to death. Cause I was like, you know, if, if you don't believe her as a ball player, the movie's not going to work. And again, I was able to trust her. She worked, she played six days a week, every day, um, for three months training. And, uh, I mean, I don't even play that much when, when I was playing. So, uh, 
you know, uh, it was just being able to trust her. And I still didn't know if I'd made the right decision until the first day of dailies when I looked at the film and, and saw Sanaa's performance and uh, how good she was acting wise. And I said, well, we'll just make the basketball work. And, uh, you know, we did some creative cutting, but, you know, she worked her butt off and, and you know, learned to play. Yeah, I have the exact same hairstyle. <laughs> wait, wait, you are, ex that's what I was thinking. You're the same, the same, you look the same. And, I'm and the like, exact oh, same face. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, that is, you know, it's, it's all true. I, I uh, <clears throat> yeah, the, the fact that Sanaa's in this movie is a miracle. And uh, it was because of the reading that she did. Um, and as we joke, she almost got fired from the reading. I almost didn't do the reading. <laughs> okay. She also, she also got fired from the reading <laughs> um, because, because we had the table read for it and she comes from theater and I didn't know. She was just reading the lines and I was like, God, she sucks. Like, she <laughs> sucks. <laughs> And I, I, I told Reg after, I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? This is like, everybody's coming to this. Producers, I got to do something. And I tried to call somebody and they didn't pick up. Thank God they did not pick up. And I said, I, I'm going to have to just like go with this. And so stressed out. And I gave like Sanaa some whack, whack, <laughs> whack, that <pep> clock. <laughs> she just looked at me like, you're so stupid. <laughs> but we start the reading and literally the second she opened her mouth, it was a different person. It was Monica and it was such a magical night. The, the reading was amazing. Spike Lee's company was there. I could not stop hugging Sanaa after. <laughs> she was like, get off of me. Um, <laughs> but she was so good. And so that performance was stuck in my head during um, casting. And we saw hundreds of girls and- uh, <laughs> Back. The, the, I always feel like it was a, there was a certain element of destiny involved because you had another actress who was going to do the reading so the day before and she got sick yeah. so she didn't get sick oh I would God. never have done yeah. it and then um, it was like two days before the the table read yeah it was scary yeah yeah and it was your dad. Was that said, like I was just starting to work in LA. I was getting a lot of guest spots. So I was feeling myself. <laughs> and I got a call from my dad because you guys had a relationship. And he was like, there's this young um, up and coming director who has this script um, and there's a table read. And me coming from theater and, and having done so many plays and now that I was getting paid to do these guest spots, I was like, I'm not doing no stage reading. Because Law and Order was more important. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I didn't know what it was. I hadn't read it yet. And I don't think that I got to read the whole script before. So I almost, it was like one of those things where you look back and you're like, thank God. Because I could have easily just been like, no, no thanks. There's always that element of destiny that you just don't understand. No, no doubt. So yeah, so I saw a ton, a ton of women. Nobody was right. So I had to not come in and read with Omar and the chemistry was just insane. <laughs> and uh, so I, I just didn't know what to do though at that point because she had never touched the ball. It wasn't even that, yeah, I don't play basketball. So I had never picked up a basketball in her life. And I'd said, I said, I would never do that to, to female athletes. I couldn't set us back, you know, uh, years by having someone whack up there. Um, so Sana started with having her brother train her. Um, and then she rightfully said, look, if, if I'm going to keep going through this process, then you need to hire me a trainer. And, you know, she was right to advocate for herself. So we hired a woman who was an assistant coach of the Sparks to train her. And so she trained for three months with no guarantee of the part um, because I could not make a decision uh, because I just really wanted an athlete. And, um, but it finally, once again, her dad called me. <laughs> And said, my dad told me, so this is the thing that's crazy. Everybody was like, just, you know, this, it doesn't look like you're going to get this job, just drop out. But I had this one woman who was kind of a mentor to me and she was like, you're learning a new skill. You're learning basketball. Is it fun? And I was like, yeah. And she was like, well, just do it for the fun. Stop worrying about getting the job. And so that's actually that one piece of advice is what kept me going. Thank God. 
But finally her dad called me after three months and said, you know, what you're doing is abusive and <laughs> you need to make a decision. <laughs> and he was right. And I, uh, I had two tapes. I had Sanaa's tape and I had a ball player tape uh, who, who had, was with an acting coach at the same time. They were on these parallel tracks. And, you know, I sat down, I, I'll keep bringing up his name, but it's true. Reggie, my husband said, you know, what, what is this? Is this a love story or is it a basketball film? And, you know, when I really thought about it, it was a love story set in the world of basketball. And I knew that, you know, you could fake a, a jump shot, you can't fake a close up. And, and so I said, I got to go with Sana. Sana. So that's so interesting. It's still stunning to me, even though I also understand it for you. Like how, how, how did you go about creating the character? Because like I said, I, I, there was so much on the page. I see a lot of Gina, but obviously you're a great actress. So you made it into something very, very authentic yourself and even became a basketball player. How, how was your process of, of creating that character? Well, in hindsight, even though it was the, the going for the part and the, before, you know, all of the training and auditioning and like kind of having to prove myself for four months before getting the part, the, you know, quote unquote abusive part, which, you know, um, that in a weird way prepared me for Monica because it's kind of her journey. It's all about, you know, proving herself and having a vision for her life and herself that is unconventional, that people don't believe in. And so, and then the actual physicality of, like, I was carrying, or I was in, I became Monica before, before we even started, before I got the job, like, I would wear, I'm such a girly girl, and I love, you know, all things very feminine, and I knew that I wanted Monica to be different than that, and so I was wearing big basketball shorts and carrying a basketball around. My friends were looking at me like I was crazy. I was like, they were like, what are you doing? And that partially came from Colleen, my coach, who was a real coach for Sparks. She was amazing. And she was part of the, part of the reason, like she kind of like infused the joy of the game and the joy of, um, being competitive and she, we had fun with actually playing with character while I was doing the drills on the court. So she was actually helpful in kind of getting that kind of Monica swagger. So we actually have a couple of pre-screened questions from fans to the group. Um, this one uh, is sort of to Gina, but it's came in for, on, from Facebook uh, from Tatiana from Los Angeles. And the question is, Gina, you spoke so ele elegantly on the gender gap, particularly for Black female directors in the documentary, Half the Picture. Considering the climate of today, do you see an increase in Black female directors having the option to direct their own content? And do you see a rise in Hollywood's green, light, green lighting stories with Black female protagonists? I, think, <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, uh, uh, I, I can, there's positives, I'll start positively. Um, there are more women getting the opportunity and there are some dope young women coming up. I just, you know, Alfre's movie, Clemency, you know, that's a talented filmmaker and uh, this woman who did Miss Juneteenth. And so there are some young, women coming up and I know that those of us, the very few of us that are in this definitely feel a responsibility when we see talent to, to reach back and, and let's pull some more folks in. Uh, every time I get excited though about, oh my gosh, we're getting more opportunities and then the numbers come out and black women are, I think it's 2% of <clears throat> directors that are, are making movies in this industry, which is so staggering to me. So um, for me, I have to keep my head down and not think about those numbers because then you just get depressed um, and just focus on that I have stories that I want to tell and I have to overcome no and I can't worry about the numbers. I just have to do the best work that I can so that I can continue to tell the stories. And also I know that in my success, others will have success as well. Um, 
and that's that's what I focus on. So I, I think it's important that filmmakers coming up don't focus on the numbers. You you, you can't. You just have to focus on the work and focus on being great uh, and reaching for greatness. And that um, is 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 all you can focus on. And that you hope that. Um, and I, I I do believe that if you're writing something really good, that it will find uh, a voice and a space. Um, so yeah, just focus on the work. Couldn't agree with you more. I think that's an, such a good answer. Um, Alfrey, I have a question for you. You have done so many incredible pieces of work. Um, my favorite thing about your performance here is obviously you are someone who is ambitious and an artist and all of these things, but you brought such an honesty in your performance of a very different kind of woman and to a, re a relationship with your daughter that I rarely see. Like, I, I, I feel like that the mother character is so often turned into a, a cliche of some sort of thing. So what was, wh what was that process for you like and, and, and how was it taking on that role? First of all, I was completely struck by the girl genius when I picked up that script, it was one of the most beautifully rendered scripts I'd ever written. It was smart, it was exciting, it was authentic on so many levels. And, uh, and then I met Gina, I was really excited to meet her. I was, I, I was probably just like, you know, I could have inhaled her. It's like, my God, the baby has been born. The Messiah is here. She is just, she covers all the bases. And the thing is, I grew up uh, as an athlete. And so I was super excited about it. But then I didn't really want to be the mom because <laughs> it's like, that's no fun. And especially somebody that says, oh, you sweat too much. It's like, oh, damn, I want to be in it. I want to be anywhere near it. But God, I gotta be that person. And then as we talked, and and Gina, you said to me that it was more or less your experience with your mom growing up and how she was not of the same mind that you were as an athlete. Then I was very protective of that. Like, you know what? You gotta represent, and you gotta be Gina's Monica's mom here. And you know what? One of the things that people don't do is that when you are of a, this is why I think people don't do moms well. Hmm. A lot of the best writers, I'm not talking about the pedestrian ones, certainly not the mediocre ones, but that period where we would really know who a mom is, that's a period for us when parts of our brain as a teen has shut down so we can love them or we can rebel against them. But we really don't see women. And so, so I, I always feel a responsibility to, to help find the real woman in a mom. And although it was very exciting, I, you know, it, it was, yeah, it, it is legitimate to because it comes out of love every you know that's the thing is you when people are trying to correct you even if they're being incorrect with it the thing that a lot of us miss and misinterpret in life and in reinterpreting life for for the screen is is where where is the impulse to correct coming from and um and yeah, it, it, I found on certain days I, I could read the book instead of watch the action on the floor, which was a big thing for me. I just wanted to be anywhere near Gina. I mean, girl, when you think about it, that script, you, you can't believe the efforts that I've had to read through the years. And to get a script like that, where it just like, it fired on all cil cylinders, it covered the bases, look at all my cliches, and, and, and I was turning the page and so now, yes, I was emotional. Then I got pumped up. Then I got all kind of horny. It was like, oh my God, is this, <laughs> we, we have turned a corner here. And yeah, it was, it was very exciting. And I, the thing that made me most excited was that it was a young person, it was a woman, and she was a colored person. So that meant 
that there is a whole world that exists that we all live in and middle class, for God's sakes. You have to believe. It was like, oh, my God, I would know these people. The daddy's sitting there and they're having dinner and they got nice cars. They go to jobs. You know, they were, they were people that we all grew up with and knew. So all, all of those reasons, but especially that I knew I would get to see, I get to hear from this voice. Talk a little bit, you and Sana, I'd love to talk a little bit about that, that you know, crescendo altercation in the kitchen. Because I thought it was so, I could feel the depth of all of the, the that dynamic all along. But talk a little bit about doing that scene, because I, I feel like, once again, it's a scene that we've seen, no, mom, ah, you know, that, that kind of moment many times before. But I'd love to hear about the experience of, of finding that moment together. I remember... You know, I was prepared emotionally for the scene. I knew that I wanted Mana to, was she crying in the, in the um, she cried in the script, right? Was it written or I knew, I had made a decision that I wanted her to cry. Mm -hmm. Anyway, it was one of those things where all the emotion was there and every time we got to the point, the, there was a slap and every time we got to it and it was a, you know, a fake slap. Um, it wasn't, coming but it was all there and then all of a sudden I got a real slap and everything came and Alfred said oh my god I'm so sorry I didn't mean to do that but you don't have to say anything Alfred I knew she did it for me do you know what I mean I knew she did it for me I knew it was a loving and you know I had been on stage getting slapped eight shows a week so that wasn't a thing for me you know what I mean it actually really helped me you do whatever it takes to get there and get it you know on screen so I am forever grateful for the slap I gonna tell you that was the that was probably the hardest thing I had to do in the whole script <laughs> I have never hit either of my children ever <laughs> I got smacked every day of my life growing up, but I have a hard time. I can cuss people out, but I can't really, especially somebody I love, I, you know, I, I just have a hard time. So I knew that I was getting there. It was like, I knew I was stopping myself. And, and your face is so pretty and it was so, <laughs> there was not a mark on it. I was like, oh no, but, and you actually had some little, Redness, I oh me, Kyla. Patty, well, I'm sorry, just real quick. The one I, I did in that scene learned something tremendous as well, and I'm sure I, that you've come across this too. I was so close when the real slap happened; it was such a shock, and I almost yelled "cut!" and I would have shot myself if I had done that. But like the fact it, it was the. I mean, that performance is in the movie, you know? And uh, so to, to understand that sometimes actors need to do things for each other that, you know, I wasn't able to give in that moment, but that's okay, you know? And for me to almost blow that moment, uh, it's still a, a shock uh, to me, but again, to, to give in and, and let them have that and let them figure it out. It was a really amazing lesson to, to watch those two. Yeah, that's so cool because I have seen that too. And I have definitely had my moments where, particularly with ch ch child actors, where the other actor will start to literally direct that. And, and you end up in this beautiful case where you're watching, you're watching them take care of each other. And I'm not surprised. I can feel that in that scene that, that they're so connected. That's such a great story. Well, it's a great scene and it's a great relationship as a result of it. Yeah. Um, so Kyla, I was going to ask you, so here's, you, you had such an incredible presence and, 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 and such a, such emotion. You were such a young person. I can't believe you're 11 years old. That shocks me. Um, what was it like for you to not only take on playing such an unusual character and doing so many different things, but you're also living up to a great actress who's doing another another version of that. How did you go about forming that character for yourself and how much were you watching Sana's performance or how, how did you do that? Um, it was, it was, it's weird because looking back on it, it's like I was 
11. Like, I, I literally was like, wait, I get to be in a movie where I can play basketball and I can beat up on boys and I, I can act like a boy. Like, ooh, this is going to be fun. So the character was so close to me because that's who I was at the time growing up. Like, I grew up with all brothers. Like, I was playing basketball. I was extremely rough. And I was like, okay, well, let me just let me just have fun with it, you know? I, I think that's one of the best parts of me being a child actor and being a part of so many amazing things and, and being a part of something as amazing as this is that um, there wasn't, a, I didn't feel a lot of pressure put on me. It was just like, have fun with it. And we, we have a coach for you. Like I coached with Colleen as well. How do you have a coach for you? Go, go shoot with her. And, and, and I, think, I, I think the only time I really did feel the pressure was like, okay, I gotta look like I hoop. Like, I know I, I know I play basketball a little bit, but I got to look like I do this. Like, I'm going to – and I think that still follows me to this day. Like, anything that I'm a part of, I'm like, okay, no, I got to look like I really do this. And I really have to make sure that I'm breathing in every part of this character. And I think it probably started being so young and being a part of something like Love and Basketball where it was like, okay, I can't I can't look crazy. I, uh-uh, I got to – I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get with them, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> they fill these buckets, you know, so I think that, you know, has, has, has helped me in this industry and, and why I'm still able to be here and giving me the, the drive to, you know, want to become the character and really, and really give their story. And just every time I sit back and watch this movie, I just flash back to the, to the premiere and I'm just like, you obviously were so young that you uh, that you experienced all kinds of things, and I know you've been asked about this before, but all kinds of things on set for the first time, which has got to be like such a such a strange thing. Mm -hmm. um, but apparently, your kiss is your first real kiss, which I can't. I both can't imagine directing, but I definitely can't imagine acting at the age of eleven. <laughs> so um, we actually have a clip of Gina talking about rehearsing that moment. And actually what's cute is those two actually started dating after the movie also. <laughs> but uh, um, that was, that was uh, Kyla's first kiss in real life, so it was pretty funny. Uh, you know, at the beginning of a movie before you shoot, you do rehearsal. And uh, so I had to rehearse that with them so that they wouldn't be scared on the set because, you know, there's like 40, 50 people standing around watching them kiss. And, you know, when you're 12 years old, that's a big deal. So... Uh, you know, their parents are there at rehearsal. I made the parents leave out the room and, you know, they kept, uh, we do the scene and right before they got to the kiss part, they start laughing and run, you know, to opposite sides of the room. And it just kept happening over and over. So finally I said, you know, just kiss her on the cheek. And so that's how it started. And then finally, you know, Glendon, who's a little boy, just, you know, he's like, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And just kissed her. And once, once the first one happened, it got easier for him. Glendon is not that little boy anymore. <laughs> Glendon's a, a little big, player. He's boy. a big old player now. What is that outfit I'm wearing? Come on, so <laughs> to help me out. <laughs> so Kyla, how is, what is your other side of that story? Like, what's your memory? What's crazy is that some of that I, I barely remember. And then I saw Gina talking about it and I was like, Oh my, that is what happened. Like, I didn't even, I remember having to do the rehearsal, but I didn't remember like us running away and playing and stuff like that. And, and it actually, I guess, helped because when you're younger, like everybody's going to eventually have their first kiss, but it's a good excuse if mine is for work. <laughs> um, it was, I was working, like it didn't just happen randomly at school. Like, what are you talking about? But um, I just remember being um, a little shy and a little embarrassed in that moment and, not really what to make of it. Like I said, I wasn't really like into boys at that point. I think I was like just starting and I was like, okay, I mean, he cute. Um, like, <laughs> I think I was just, you know, um, having my little, you know, childhood moment and I got to blame it on being at work. <laughs> but I have to say, Kyla, you see how she is. I mean, she's just bubbly and, and <laughs> that day, it was a different kind of day of the kiss. You were just like, just quiet. It was very funny, very funny. I switch it up. I try to, I try to maintain my, my, my good energy, but you know, <laughs> you know, I've learned that over the years. <laughs> Tara Lynn, we haven't gotten to talk to you about this yet, and it's a perfect time, really, because 
it's funny, you, you, you did such a beautiful job on this film, but it's interesting to be now looking back on it after all of this time and hearing what the film came into. What were your ambitions? I don't know if you'd met Gina before, but like when you read the script, I know every film has its challenges, but every film also has its wonderful ambitions to do, to kind of bring to life things that you haven't had a chance to do. What was your approach to it when you first read the script? Like what was your biggest desire for it? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that it, it, you know, when you read a script as an editor and you read a really good script, it's like breathing rare air, right? And when I went in to meet with Gina, I mean, the thing about Gina is she is the best poker player as far as, you know, like you do not know what she's thinking. And so, you know, there's this, this, there's this confidence that you have in what, you know, your ability, and, and, but that you have to still go into a room and, you know, uh, talk to a director and, and, and convince them why you should be the person to sit next to them for hours on end. And I just remember kind of talking to her about things I loved about the script and, you know, and she was listening and, and, you know, across from me and at the same time, I had no idea what she was thinking. And I remember leaving the meeting, not even, you know, did that go well? I, I just I couldn't tell. And, um, but I just had so many thoughts, so many thoughts about, the script and why I loved it and why I connected with it and why, you know, I wanted to be a part of it. And that, you know, I think you, you ultimately, I, I felt like um, I needed to, I, there was more I wanted to say. She needed to know how good the, the movie she was about to, to make, you know, how much we needed it and how, you know, and so I, that part of it was great. And, and, and getting, getting the, that opportunity to take that journey with Gina is one that I, I treasure and learn so much from. You know, I wasn't a basketball player. I mean, I, I, I was a swimmer in high school. So, you know, different, different skill set. So it was really a great uh, opportunity to um, really talk about sitting with the director and, and just getting, you know, I working both performance, but also the technical aspect of who Monica had to be as an athlete. That's great. And, and when during the process, and it, by the way, that really shows, you, you can feel that. When during the process did you start to really see that something special was happening or did you always know it because of the scripts, the script and the dailies and what you were able to do with them? Or was there a moment that it really started to kind of come together? Um, I think in some ways as the dailies started coming in and the performances were just, you know, so real. You know, and, and Monica's vulnerability was so palpable. Um, I, I knew that, I knew that, I knew we had the performances. I knew we had that. And I trusted in getting to know Gina, and I, I did go to set a couple times, that she was going to work for as long as it took to get that other part right. And that it was going to just be able to take you know, her coming in to make the adjustment she needed to make. You know, showing a first cut to a director is always fraught with, um, you know, uh, I, I can't, I, you know, it, I know it's, I can't imagine what, what, what it's like for you guys to, to sit there for the first time. And for an editor, you know, you're ready to kind of, you're ready to move on, you're ready to start working, and yet you know that there's this moment that you guys have to process what you just saw. And that part was hard. And, and right after the, the cut, um, it took Gina a good, I don't know, a couple of weeks to just settle into um, that we were going to be okay, <laughs> you know, that the film was going to be okay. Um, and that, but I think that really for me, there were so many moments of just being able to have the footage come in and just be able to enjoy as an audience before I got to the editing part of it, um, what was coming, what was coming in. Well, speaking of seeing the film, we have someone who saw the film many years ago and, and they were influenced by it. And as much as they've, you know, this film was influenced by basketball and Gina, you should help me with this introduction. Cause I think that, you know, you have more to say, but we have a special guest who is the foreword for the LA Sparks, Candace Parker. Hey. Hi. Hi everybody. I've Hi been Candace. Sitting here listening to this. This is like, <laughs> These are goals right now for me, just FYI. So, 
<laughs> May I say, like, Candace is just, like, my hero, such a dope baller, and just so changed the game, and, and, and you played at Tennessee, which is where I wanted to play, <laughs> wanted to play for Pat Summit so bad, uh, but the things that you accomplish, and, like, I'm so enamored by people who are great at what they do, and you are great, and to, so to have you on this call is just really amazing to me and, and I sincerely appreciate it. And I wish this was in person, but you know, this is the close, closest as I get to you. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> thank you for being here. No, I really appreciate it. I mean, this movie was my life. Like, I mean, you talk about just the impact that the WNBA started in 97. This movie came out when I was 14. Mm -hmm. It was just right when I fell in love with basketball. And it was so much so that you know, in high school, everybody knew what my favorite basketball movie was. Everybody knew what my favorite movie was. You could not tell me I wasn't Monica Wright. And at, in fact, I got the Monica Wright. <laughs> I got the Monica Wright loving basketball Crenshaw jersey. Oh my god! Every every line to the movie. So this gives me so much joy to be able to tell you how influential this movie was for a person that is growing up playing basketball, aspiring to to play professionally. So it, it just means so much to be on this call. No, oh, that's, that's amazing. I have to say it was, you know, like it was, I just wanted ball players to love it. And, and that's why it was so important. It, why casting Sanaa, why it was such a big deal in, in needing to get her right. I never wanted anybody to look up on screen and, and not see a female baller and a female athlete and everything that, that is because it was such a part of me. And so again, to have your co-sign, you know, is, is really everything that I wanted um, for this. And again, all props to, to Sanaa for putting, putting in that work and, and my editor, Terry, for making her look good. And uh, I mean, you did that yourself, Sanaa, but uh, you gave a little help. But uh, yeah, that, that's amazing to, to see. Well, I, I think it was just the progression as well. Like I grew up playing against boys and Kyla, I mean, she did an amazing job representing all of us out there. That's moms wanted us to wear dresses, <laughs> come back with the dresses all messed up. And you know, I, I had a best friend growing up that was a boy. We be in the driveway playing basketball all the time and competing. And so it was just the entire movie. I mean, I literally got drafted out to LA and I had a daughter the next year. It was just like, I mean, am I Monica right? I mean, I'm not, <laughs> but it might be. So it was just, um, the movie is, has such an impact on the culture just as the female athlete and that being important as anything in the movie. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about the first time you saw it? Like, did you know it was coming? Did you know? Because it, it was such an unusual thing for a girl who is playing ball. It must have been so unusual to see something like that. Had you heard it was coming? My parents, I had seen the, the signs around. And um, my parents actually took me to see it. And my team was there. And I just remember, you know, it was right during that perfect time. And I can't say it enough of female athletes saying like, okay, I can play basketball for a profession. Okay. Female athletes are actually getting represented. Notice. And so just, I remember sitting there watching it with my parents. And then when it finally came out on, on, you know, to, to buy, I, I had the video. I mean, Every boyfriend I had, I think we've watched, <laughs> we've watched Love and Basketball. And so it just has really had an impact on me. That's so great. And Candace, I know you, you can't stay with us for, for the whole duration. So I, I wanted to, I had one more question for you, which was how did that whole of yeah. the representation of the basketball, how did that end up working? How, how was that a part of why the movie spoke to you? Because I thought that was such an incredible thing for me who doesn't play basketball. Like just the way it was filmed and the experience. What was your impression of like seeing your sport that way? It was so important to see, you know, the actual action shots. And Sanat, listen, you did an amazing job playing basketball. I mean, you, Quincy 
you know, he, he, he didn't do a layup as, as well as you did. You looked the part and played the part. So if we're, we're, if we're picking teams, I'm picking you, but um, Thank you. <laughs> I got you. But I think just the representation of putting your heart and your soul into things. I mean, there's a scene in there where she gets in trouble and gets a technical and that's been a topic of discussion for a long time in female yeah. sports is if we show emotion, we're not acting ladylike, but emo emotions is sport. Mm -hmm. So that really spoke to me about, you know, there's a scene where she's like, you know, if he does that, he gets patted on his butt. But if I do that, you know, I get told I have an attitude. So there's just scenes in there that you show in college and just the transition of that. I played for Coach Summit, as we spoke about earlier, and, you know, the hot dogging, the holding the follow through and having to to stand there and do that again. I mean, it was just seeing basketball represented in a way that it actually happened. It, it really spoke to me uh, just individually and as an athlete. That's so great. Yeah. Gina, any last thing to add for Candace? I'm so happy you were here. You're you know, such an impressive person and it's so great you were here to pop in on this and join. Yeah, and I just, you know, I look forward to when you get to play ball again, hopefully, uh, this, this will go away and yeah I look forward to just uh yeah going to a game and seeing you play live right thank you all so much I really appreciate it yeah thank you Candace. hi Candace. So we only have one more question and it's for everybody um how did you all feel when the movie was released and or, and when you finally got to see it for those of you who hadn't seen it um I felt I was so excited because everything that I felt just being on set with, you know, a young woman in charge who was not, who was being herself. And I realized I, I'd have to look at the filmography, but I think that's the first time I had a, a, a female in charge of a set. And uh, I mean, I'd had some like episodic directors, but, and, but the whole crew, uh, and and our guys, because it was a very masculine set, the guys that were there, but there was none of that energy that, where they even come with like, you know, the kind of, you know, whipping it out contest that can happen with with men on crews and in cast. Everybody's like, you know, well, it, so it was, it was, so I had a, a reaction there. It was like, I don't care what else happens. And I had, you know, Kyla, you guys were just, I was so excited that that, and so fulfilled that that that, that day had come just in the shooting of it. So when I finally saw it, I was like, it was like, you know, we had won the, you know, we were the, the, you know, you know, March Madness. <laughs> it was like, oh yeah, we did it, we did it. But the the thing that happened was it it gave me a legitimacy in a lot of circles that I didn't have before for friends that weren't filmic or all of that. So it just it just completely opened up my life. And like I said, I was just riding a sidecar with this. So it's something that I've just been, um, you know, I never say, oh, proud to do this, proud of that. But I've, I've been proud to have been in that company. Wow. So no, no, no. For me as an actor, I love, I really, this is, I believe that what we do is, is can be spiritual work. And I, and I take such um, deep pride in, in putting things out there into the world that truly touch people and this is one of those that did and is still doing it and so that just makes me so happy. Kyla? And I would say for me um, of course I told you guys about being at the premiere and being wide-eyed and just lost in the story. Um, what's amazing for me is that I we shot it when I was so young so every time I do watch it um, every time I've maybe I watched it again at 16 and then again and, and throughout the years and, and you know, you grow up and you mature. So every time I would watch it, I would get something new from it. Okay. What about you, Terry? Well, you know, the first time being able to watch it with an audience, you know, there's an editor saying that, you know, you know, you're done with a film when you stop 
seeing the cuts where you can just sit and watch it as, you know, re, re become an audience member again. And uh, that's what I remember is being able to just sit in the audience with everybody else and feel like, you know, we got this right. Mm -hmm. That's great. Wow. And, you know, what was it like for you when you finally got to see it with an audience mm -hmm. as an officially finished film? Yeah, it's interesting. Well, it, it, we kind of had two, I had two experiences that were really important. Uh, the first audience preview, first and only, we did it uh, in Crenshaw, all black audience. And it was so raucous and amazing. It was the, like, it felt, it felt amazing uh, to just be in that environment and to have people feel the way they felt about the film so vocally. Um, so that was the first. And then we then very shortly after went to Sundance and had that, and that was 1300 people and it was 99% white audience. So totally different. And I remember uh, at the very end, the very last scene, the movie ends and it was dead silent. <laughs> And I remember literally in my head, I said, well, I guess they didn't get it. <laughs> and then suddenly the crowd erupted. And I mean, I don't know if you feel this way, Patty, for me, when, when you're making a film and all these people come together and the fact that they trusted me, uh, all I wanted was to make sure I did what I said I was gonna do so that I didn't fail them, that, I, that they didn't come on a ride that, that, that wasn't gonna come to fruition. It was like, that thing drives me, like Alfred Woodard trusted me. And so I couldn't, I didn't wanna fail for that and for every person that believed in it and for Mike DeLuca and like all these people and Spike that, that, that stood up for me to, to fight, to give me this opportunity, I did not wanna fail them so to sit and hear an audience respond and know that that we made a good film like it's it's an amazing feeling uh just it's an amazing feeling well congratulations because you did not fail and not only did you not fail we're here 20 years later having a reunion about your film gina so congratulations and honestly congratulations to all of you we all everybody you've all done such great work and everybody aspires all the time to do things that reach people and touch people but not everybody gets to be, make be a part of films that you do come back and talk about 20 years later because people are are coming up to you all the time so congratulations to all of you it's a huge accomplishment to make something that resonates in that way and i want to say thank you to everybody that tuned into this it's been such a fun thing to do i i so enjoyed it and hearing everybody's answers um, and so thanks for streaming this and remember that you can stream Love in Basketball all kinds of places, Google Play, YouTube, iTunes, Vudu, Amazon Prime. So um, tune in and, uh, and thanks for being here. Thanks so much for doing thanks, this. Thanks, Patty. Patty, Patty, Patty for bringing it together. Love you guys. I love, I love you. you. Stay healthy. Stay safe. I love you.